Welcome to the Enlighten Up Podcast, where I am going to take you into a deep exploration of what it means to exist in this current reality. We are going to raise your vibes, open your mind, expand your heart, and dive deep into the wondrous mysteries and possibilities of this lifetime. There's been a spiritual catalyst that has set in motion the awakening process of many across the globe to return to the knowingness of self and unite what has been separated. Together, we're going to bring light into that darkness. We're going to remember the joy of living. But most of all, we're going to turn up the volume of our own eternal power and do the thing we're here to do. Welcome back to the Enlighten Up podcast, everyone. We are here with our favorite astrologist and seer, Mary Ducina, to talk about the upcoming full moon in Virgo. Mary, welcome back. It's so good to have you here. It is, and I'm coming into one of my favorite, favorite months of any given celestial great turning of the wheel when the sun has shifted into our beautiful 12th in the western zodiac Pisces Mm -hmm. it's truly the final sign in in the northern hemisphere of winter and then we because we're going to come into our our seasonal eclipses that are going to spring forth at our March full moon and our April Aries conjunct the north node eclipse so I'm, I'm excited but it's a really good time with this Virgo full moon as the sun is just shifting into Pisces on the 18th February's got the leap year that gave us an extra point of light that only happens every four years. So we're coming into accepting some of the electrical, eruptive, erotic, (laughs) uh, energetic changes of the yang vibrations of all this Aquarius and the Aries. And so I want to say that we've got our earthy mama, we've got our Pachamama, uh, Virgo full moon, Mother Nature, and our beautiful Pisces, yin, mystical, oceanic cycle, we really want to softly lean into this and let ourselves be nourished, really nourished, because it's about to level up and get busy. Yeah, I this I love this time too. And, you know, there's just so much fertility and wisdom held within the time of Pisces when this full moon is uh, happening. And so... Uh, you know, why don't we start off with the card that I picked for this full moon, which I just love how the cards just seem to match up so perfectly. You know, there really is such divine uh, orchestration that we cannot even fathom on how it works or comes together. But I'm going to show the audience the card that I picked uh, prior to you and I jumping on this uh, podcast together. And it was for this full moon in Virgo, Woodwives Adaptability, number 64. And so, which is interesting because 64 is a 10 and 10 is the ending of cycles. Uh, It is also the ending in the beginning, which is very Piscean, you know, uh, in many ways. But the card here, the keywords are adaptability, strong roots, and growth, which are very Virgo, um, very Virgo uh, energy. So the woodwives dance into your dreams as a reminder to be grounded no matter what life offers you. You need to know who you are, what you'll tolerate, what you've learned to date, and what boundaries to set so you feel good about yourself. Life is going to offer you something extraordinary now. And in order to learn and receive its blessings, you must remember that being grounded gives you more freedom, not less. You have everything you need. You have all it takes to do this right now. If also you keep reminding yourself to be flexible, you will be amazed by how well things play out for you. The woodwives are both wisdom keepers and students of the new world, as these forest spirits have an uncanny ability to adapt to changing circumstances and always find the perfect way to grow and expand. They represent what you already know 
how to be and do. Learn, be in beginner's mind, let go of your rigid notions of how you think things should be, and be present to what is right now, unencumbered by your projections. Is there a storm brewing because things need to change? No worries, nothing can uproot you now, and it will pass, and you will dance with nature and move with it all. Perhaps you're being given an opportunity to take a chance on something new, and you're not sure how far you can go without losing your footing. Have no fear, for when you remember your roots, your integrity, your authentic self, you can stretch yourself beyond the invisible line you drew. Go for it. You will be so glad you did. Wow. Isn't that nice? Isn't that rich? Mm-hmm. Isn't it just Isn't perfect rich? for this full moon? It really is. I When I think about Pisces, the years that I spent living on the beach, you know, one of my nature medicine signs and wonders to behold, you know, when the, I'm real into the creatures that, the creature teachers and the animal totems and the numerology of it all when it happens. And I'd be going across the long bridge between, I was on the west coast of Florida and leaving the beach and driving over to do a television show or a radio show over in Tampa, which was more cosmopolitan city. And I was leaving the nature majesty of the beach and the stars. And so one of my signals or signs and wonders is when three dolphins would break at one time across the ocean if I was sitting out there at the sunset happy hour or whatever, just leave the office, go sit down and just, you know, those negative ions and the the salt water and just sit there even in solitude. Because Pisces can be points of power in solitude, especially when we come into this, the 12th sign, the, the 12 disciples, the 12 months of our measured calendar year, the one and the two adding to the three, and it's a different kind of creative impetus that that we get. It's it's when we're starting to take a deeper dive, the leap of faith, but the leap is inward with with the axis of Pisces and Virgo, and as 2024 has begun, you know, as I, there was so much astrology to cover on the New Moon podcast that I did over on Lighting the Void, um, which you can find on YouTube, Lighting the Void Radio, that channel, because he mentions where I'm with Nicole at the full moon. If you want to track back of of the new moons, which are two weeks before Nicole and I get to collaborate at the full moon, full moons bring out where the light needs to shine on any shadow. New moons have to do with, like, the gunshot happens and the horse race begins or the runners, you know, ready, set, go, and so... I would say that the biggest ready, set, go new moon cycle of this of this Aquarius planetary parade that is hitting us in an iconic, historic, truly incarnational focus. I, I said I'm going to go on the record, and there's a lot of different uh, mystics and astrologers saying a lot of different things, but for me, mm-hmm. just for me, my little humble self, I truly feel on multi levels that the dawning of the age of Aquarius, started to, we started to dip our toe into the water with it in 2012 with the end of the, of the long count of the Mayan calendar. I can look back in my life at 2012 and see all the changes that have purged and surged, and I invite you all to do the same. Just travel back in time to 2012 and mm-hmm. look at the perspective now. And I feel like that this is it. You know, the the rocket has launched, the... the um, Almighty I am intelligence frequencies are here where we don't have to just go into hallucinogenic states to be able to have that turned on. It's fine if you want to do different things, but this is really like the eye opening and the veils being lifted up for us to be recalibrated and alchemized. And we're all shifting in to both some childhood naturally formed archetypes for this particular lifetime, but also we are shedding the skin of former archetypical um, uh, identifications that we had that were protectors and uh, the the way we would kind of hide behind the curtain, like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, don't pull back the curtain, you might not like what you see. So when we went into the Aquarian shift, of 2024 and the sun started that in the third week of January and then Mercury popped in depending on where you live over the 4th and 5th of February and then the new moon of course was married 
in the sign of Aquarius, there was the outer light and the inner light in Aquarius and Pluto, um, the great transformer, is going to spend the next 16 plus years in the sign of Aquarius. So this is the first time since like 1700s, late 1780s that we've had these kind of alignments and conjunctions in history making dynamics. Of course it matters to you and I and Nicole how it's happening in our intimate personal life. That's the 3D that we live in every day and that we're pulsed and changed by and we either push it back or we invite it in. And with Aquarius, sometimes it just downloads whether you're ready for it or not. Aquarius has a lot to do with the spontaneous and the surprising resets that go on in our life. It's eccentric. It's bohemian. It's don't tell me what to do and when to do it. And it's the rebel with the cause. That's the difference. It's the rebel with the cause. As you may remember, Nicole and I talking to everyone about when the planet Uranus, which is the one that governs the sign of Aquarius, first started in um, the very easily steadfast patience, I'm okay with routine, I need everything just to be status quo. Taurus, we started talking about things like currency changes, gossips and rumors of, of food. Now they have a new term, food insecurity in the world. And although we don't seem to see it as much here in the States, on the on the mainstream media, as they like to call it. Personally, I think journalism and reporters lost the cause, and it's time for the for the revolutionary news reporters to come forth. And I'm all about heralding and celebrating that. There's farmers all over the world. It's happening in Poland, in Germany, in France, and they're taking this slurry with their tractors and they're just spreading it all over the governmental and parliamentary, uh, uh, you know, stop telling us to cull our chickens and our cows because of some imaginary thing that you're inventing up or carbon monoxide. So you're seeing this, the Taurus is the bull. So the signs right now that are very emphasized since like October, late October of 2023, is now we're seeing the rising up of the Taurus Scorpio axis. You better do this or it could kill you. You better listen to me because I've got some kind of a secretive fear that I want to dump on you. And I don't care if you're on Twitter X or you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. There's all this, there's this psyops thing that's going on besides the the tidal waves of AI and chat GPT and all these different kind of things to where people, I mean, I'm hearing so many people of varying generational age groups saying a couple of things. I never thought I would see this kind of stuff going on in my life, in my world, and I don't even know what to believe anymore. I don't even know what is true anymore. And so the higher octave of Mercury and the Sun and Pluto for quite a while and Mars going into Aquarius, these these conjunctions that are rolling out that are starting to surge on us just around this full moon of the 24th, 25th of February. So when we get into, I mean, there's such a power trinity trio of days around February the 26th to February the 28th when we've got Venus and Aquarius. These are the two main signs right now, Aquarius and Taurus. It's going to shift to Aquarius and Aries with Chiron and the North Node as we get closer to April. All the planets are forward motion right now. So this is literally... Do a reset to take care of your body. Virgo right now is, is the, the biome, the gut flora. You know, are you taking probiotics? Do you, do you invest in some aloe vera gel? What do you do to really adjust your nutritional protocols to level yourself up on a, on a physical way? What herbs, what type of dietary changes do you want to make? And the Pisces about the breath of the divine flame, which I'll get to. But the February 26th, the February 27th, the February 28th, Venus in Aquarius. Now, all these are also in alignment with Pluto, the great transmutational phoenix that says, oh, you will now let go of the old toxic ways because the candle is lit and the breath, the sacred fire of the divine has come into this particular incarnation regardless of your biological age. This is your soul contract revealing much to you, and you're going to be able to get this yourself, by yourself, 
There may be mentors, there may be teachers, there may be lectures, there may be books. There, of course, will be a lot of visionary dreams and, and nature miracles appearing to you. But now it's pretty much for a lot of people what they have survived as reference point teachers. And now we're moving into how we will bloom and thrive. The Aries and Aquarius is going to take us into thriving rather than just survival mode of all the fear-mongering. So Mars is going to square, you know, if we come into like March 9th, Mars is going to square Uranus and Taurus. So it's like, what is it that since you were a child that you've, without any, before society started to influence you in your schooling and your family environment and their wishes and their opinions and their beliefs and their judgments thrust upon you, and we all go through that in our childhood theater environments, but when you were in the woods, when you were on the beach, when you were playing with the animals, when you were in your room thinking when mom and dad or whomever was raising you was busy with, you know, regular life 101, what did you seem to have a knowing about as a child? You know, I love the outdoors or I love, you know, playing in the water or I always relax when I'm knitting or I always meditate. You know, I love dance or I love exercise or I'm a runner or, or I, I love my I love leaning in to my scholastic things. Or you, you, maybe you knew you wanted to be a veterinarian or a nurse. How, so how when we're children, there's this knowing of we're here for a reason and somehow we're going to serve. And every year when the sun moves in to the water sign of Pisces and, and we have a full moon in Virgo, and then again six months from now when the sun moves into Virgo, in the last uh, week of August and the first three weeks of September when we will have the full moon in Pisces. These two times annually are where we are able to say, how do I feel I'm congruent with the service that I am to be in this life, in this world? Where do I feel like I'm serving my energetic signature in the most appropriate way? And is everything seeming to be hoisted onto me and, and maybe I need to check myself and how might I be serving my highest good by also prioritizing my wellness. So Virgo is the sixth sign of the zodiac. It usually has very easy, neutral colors of like navy and, and beige and silvers and grays. It's, you know, Virgo's more like, you know, I don't need to have garish, outlandish, fashion trend type of colors. So it has a lot to do with where do I feel stresses and strains of what's stressing me by overanalyzing, by being a little compulsive, by being a little too OCD about analyzing and controlling the routine and the structure of my day. Virgo is the sixth house and the natural zodiac. It has to do with that day-to-day commitment, what's on our daily schedule, what's on our list to go get done, what are we cleaning, what are we decluttering, what are we uh, deciding that I'm done just complaining about that, I'm done with that just frustrating me. We don't always have to choose the teacher, the life teacher of frustration and lack and complaining or whining, which if, you know, that, that Virgo, the pluses and minus of the sign of Virgo with this full moon can have to do with why do we have to only invoke the change under pressure. So Virgo is saying to us, where might you be a little too hard on yourself? Are you driving yourself into additional stress? Therefore, you'll feel it in your gut. Um, You'll feel it in your lower back or your gut, or all of a sudden the foods don't agree with you anymore, or you just, you know, or I'm going to go clean something so I can try to decompress or relax. So Virgo is a lot about how might I organize my focus. The Pisces season of 2024 is an invitation to re-examine the belief, the beliefs and what inspires you and what you're aspiring to do, not as a financial or a societal type of goal to get applause or attention, but Pisces is about, you know, I'm reminded about my prayer choices and my meditation style and how Reiki or yoga 
or taking some solitude time for myself. And, and Pisces, to me, to me, is the strongest cycle annually for us to get incredible, incredible insights from our dreams. So maybe you'll look at meditation as a daytime or type of dreaming. I also would invite you to do journaling. Because a lot of people will say to me, I don't know, it's just since 2020 there's been so much stress and the world's going through some, the bombings and the this and the that. I just want to shut the words off and I invite them to do journaling. Because when you take pen to paper, instead of just texting someone or instant messaging someone, the Pisces season is about do not ignore the very core feeling of eye to eye, face to face at least phone call to phone call as you're hearing this podcast, as you're seeing Nicole's eyes, as you're feeling the radiations of her aura, as you're feeling the pitch and tone and timbre of your mountain mystic's voice. You know, I'm inviting you to text less, email less, and the people and the situations that you prioritize get a compatible time frame and leave the phone at home not so much in a car, you, if it gets too cold you, or too hot, you'll ruin your battery, and they're expensive. But get more on a, on a face-to-face type of basis, you know, like you do with your pets, like you do with those that are in your household. There needs to be less head down, shoulders hunched over in our three and a half to four weeks of the Pisces season this year, and less just of this electronic, the algorithms are tracking you, and the ads are popping up on your computers and your phones because you're being cyber-stalked and watched all the time. Don't ever get too comfortable with cameras and governmental or elitist or marketing and advertising eyes all over what needs to be your intimate and your private life. And so Pisces is saying, go buy that little journal. Not many people are writing things down as much. So go buy your little journals. They're much more affordable right now. And go get a really favorite felt pen or marker in a different color, and just throw that in your car too, you know, and do your think tanking and write it down and bring that little inexpensive journal from any of the big box dollar stores, or there's some beautiful ones. I I just bought myself a, get this, Nicole, a completely hand-tooled leather, full leather bound with handmade paper pages off of, yeah, the big, the big A source. But, I mean, I saw that and I'm like, how can that be? just $18. And so I bought this really artistic leather bound with the nice clutch and the, you know, clutch on it and everything. It's absolutely a magician's journal. It's what it is. And I'm like, my God, that would be $100, $100 10 years ago. So I bought it and I'm holding it and just blessing it and putting it under my pillowcase at night. If I'm going to write my astrological book in that, if I'm just going to let the first one, because it's so affordable, see a journal for 2024, but it's, it's so artistically magical and alchemical that it puts you in a place to intuitively respect it and know that, whoa, that's really, so, that's all handmade. And if I put pen to paper, or pencil to paper to that, I'm, we're not used to it now. We've moved in a society to text and keyboards and all of that. So I deliberately went 180 degrees from what the masses are doing, because I'm I'm not a sheep. I like sheep, but I'm not a sheep, and I'm not a lemming, and I'm not going to jump off the cliff when everybody else does, because that's not why we get into soul-enriching, mystical, alchemical, magical transformations. And this is that year. This is that year. So as you put pen to paper or you put the journal or the notepad by your bed wherever you're sleeping at night, put one by the couch if you fall asleep there and then carry it with you, up to the bed or buy two and just write down what that scene was, what the landscape was, what the colors were, what was the spirit being that showed up and you had spirit tea with and conversation with in that multidimensional level because 2024 is going to put you up close face-to-face and personal with your guides. There's going to be a reassignment of guides and a congruency with certain archangel energies, you'll learn their names, you'll understand what those names mean in Arabic and in Hebrew, 
and what the dynamics of the history is around them and the Egyptian and the Greek and the etymology of the words or their names, which I'm going to introduce you to one today. I don't preach it if I'm not doing it and going to start it. So this is a time to kind of allow yourself to declutter with technology and declutter with just social media, which I know a lot of people are doing right now, and instead, after lockdown cycles of four years ago, be able to move into the energy of these full moons that have all been cycling and orbiting around the number five since we begin 2024. So our key numerological numbers, 2024 is an eight. This is our infinity. And we've got full moons happening at five degrees as we come into the March 25th full moon, which will be the spring lunar eclipse in Libra, where we have to balance. So Virgo is, what do you feel it would be pleasurable to purge, to declutter, to release? And Pisces is saying, dreaming, meditating, affirming, setting intentions, all of that, what you're inspired by, what you aspire to do now in this year, this is the year for action. The North Node is in Aries. That's about crafting, allowing, and inviting a new, energized, empowered aspect of self-identity. And Mm -hmm. so we're about to go into the very yang energies of Aquarius Surge now blending with Aries as we come to that zodiacal new year and the third week of March when the actual Western zodiac will start all over again. Aries is literally the cutting of the carnal umbilical cord, how we incarnate our carnal nature, which is why I was referring to Nicole as this this particular full moon leading us into an eruptive and an erotic cycle. Many people now are doing a self-check on what am I leaning into with desire and where do my passionate what what are my preferences with passion? I've explored that. I've experimented with that. How do I, not just how do I identify with my gender or my biology or what society is saying is fashionably cool right now, but how do I identify with my own passionate pursuits? And here's the hint. It's not just your biological body. So there's going to be iconic, life-changing people that are coming into our life. And I do believe, and I'll go on record with you here with Nicole, I do believe that we're going to be meeting higher intelligence forces. It could be hybrid star seeds. It could be different star systems. It could be, wow, that was immortal or that felt like that was an out of the Milky Way galaxy type of encounter with that person that came in my dreams or I met the other day. I've known them before. They're here for a reason, and I fully recognized it when I breathed in their company and our eyes met eye to eye. This is a paranormal, out of the box, different kinds of envelopes opening up type of a cycle that we're going to be in for the next six months, for the next six months until we come to September's Pisces full moon while the solar illuminations are in Virgo. So I just want to invite you to, in your journals, in your notes, to write down where Am I right now with my nutritional, my holistic, my physical body, my spirit, in my temple body, beautiful? How might I stop bitching and judging? I'm becoming frustrated about my physical body, and I should do this, and I should do more of that. And know that sometimes when we sprain an ankle, break an arm, have a setback, that it's, number one, not as bad as it could have been. And number two, it puts us in a more of a point of, albeit a forced solitude, to take time to heal. But it also gives us the great life incarnational pause. Look around. You're plowing ahead with everything you think you ought to do on your schedule. Busy, got to do this, got to do that. And those little physical interruptions of little cold or the flu or the cough or the backache or I, you know, strained my toenail or I tripped or whatever it is, sometimes those things are about check yourself, Mm -hmm. check yourself. So with this, with this full moon in Virgo, I think it's really important for people 
to understand that it feels like with the sun being in Pisces and so close to Saturn and so close to Mercury, but all in, in, um, in Pisces, it's, there's something very important about your mental health that is, um, trying to shine a light to your body, your physical health, and that it might be time to get a little bit more serious about your anxieties, your fears, mm -hmm the inner workings of your mind that really go deep, deep, deep into your emotions. We're very Piscean energy. And there are some important messages that are being communicated to you at this time where change is required. Saturn is a very serious planet. It wants structure. It wants um, it wants a plan that you can follow. And so does Mercury. Um, but in order to do that, you have to start really looking at some of the things that maybe you've been doing physically or the, the tolls that have been happening on your body physically that uh, cannot go on any longer. There's something that uh, there's wisdom, I think, being spoken during this full moon uh, about some major changes for some people, quite drastic changes. Uh, that could be a very deep blessing because of the trine that Jupiter's playing to this moon. And I think that there's some incredible opportunities that could be presented to you if you are listening very deeply during this full moon. Remember, Pisces energy really wants you to connect to the deepest part of you, to the deepest part of uh, your connection to source, to God, to the universe. And are you in the rhythm of that? Are you flowing into the rhythm of that? And are you taking this inner journey as seriously as you need to in a manner where you're dedicated? You've got steps that you're following uh, that then also highlight how much that helps the health of your body. There, This Pisces Virgo axis is such an important axis that even on my alchemy call, uh, this month, we discussed the importance of the physical, our material world, and the importance of the spiritual world and how one is integral to the other. And this is very much what we see. And oftentimes, we get really caught up in how important our spiritual uh, journey is, but not realizing how important our physical journey is to our spiritual inner world. And I think this is something that's really coming up and highlighting, uh, especially as we also have the conjunction of North Node and um, Chiron and Aries, that there's um, something that we need to shift in order to be in a more alignment with the call of our soul, our destiny, that uh, is going through a rebirthing phase, so to speak. And it's time to get, as this Pluto energy in Aquarius, very innovative. Uh, perhaps looking at new ways, again, all this change and adaptability that came through the card I pulled is really important. It's time to maybe get out of your own way on all of the rigidity of how you think things should be and start considering how things could be. That's, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really profound. Think about any time you've been at the edge of the sea, the ocean, just, I, you know, there's the seagulls and there's the kiwis and there's the you start to look at, you just start to glance and you're in a little bit of a sea trance and, or the time that you saw a starfish, you know, or a sea urchin or the dolphins or a horseshoe crab, you know, or, or a stingray, you know, those things would just pop up, jellyfish. Those things would just pop up all the times that I spent years in Florida and, and just the, the great mystery of that just like you know i'm waiting out in the water and i'm kind of like you know the nature girl's like just jump in you know i don't think about the safety protocols or anything it's like i don't care how deep it is you know not but you know you learn when you live on the ocean by the ocean that you you know you, if you're a tourist to the ocean area these are some good tips for you you want to shuffle your feet as you're moving into the ocean because if there is a horseshoe crab which the end of that horseshoe crab can sting you it's how Steve Irwin, you know, the great nature guy of Australia, got stabbed. So when you're, you know, or if there's the manta ray, if there's jellyfish, you, you want to give the respect as you're going into the embryonic waters of the ocean. There's seasons of breeding of these creatures. People think, oh, I just need to watch out for the sharks coming in too close. No, no. If you're a woman and you get out there and you're on your monthly cycle, 
when the dolphins get those pheromones or, you know, your cut. You know, you learn in Florida, I spent a lot of time around surfers and boat people, and you getting in the water, you don't jump in with your waterproof shiny jewelry or your watches because that's a signal to the underworld, the underwater creatures, that something interesting has come into our environment. That's their home. And even if I'm respecting Mother Nature, I'm still encroaching on their world where they live 24-7, where they feed, where they're looking for birth and life. And it isn't just a predator in the ocean that wants to bite you if you're a surfer or a novice to that, to that realm of mystery and magic. It's a lot to do with if a certain sea creature is in its breeding cycle, just like I live in the mountains. Right now, we're very aware of the fact that it's breeding cycle for coyotes. So you don't just let your cats out at night. They're very aggressive. You don't just let, the, you know, I've had people walking their dogs. You know, in North Carolina, report to me in Tennessee that, oh, my God, I was walking my dog, and it was on a harness and a leash, and a coyote came out and tried to get it. If kittens are being born, you know, the red-tailed hawk and owls at night will get those little kittens, even though you think you've put a box and a cat thing outside because you really don't want to have the cats in the house. So there's things that you learn when you lean into the Virgo of Mother Nature. When you're hiking out west, you need to be a, a present of mountain lions. You need to be aware here in in the mountains, we're going to have an early spring. So the copperheads are beginning to come out. So when you learn the cycles of the vortex and the portals that you're currently residing in, you offer up as indigenous cultures teach you the respect and the reverence that you give to the creatures that that's their domicile. That's their place. And for me, Nicole, the oracle cards and the tarot cards come to life a lot of times. I mean, yeah, you can sit with the paper cards and they're gold foiled and this, but then you can walk outside and realize that um, a great blue heron is right outside the door looking at you over by your dock or walking along the woods like, whoa, you know, got my attention. So it's like, for me, that is an animal card that came to life. You know, the other day a, a bald eagle flew across the lake with its mate. And I mean, that always, always captures my breath from my Native American First Nations teaching. I mean, a pair of bald eagles has come into the woods here in this neighborhood, and it's just like, my God, the presence of Great Spirit has arrived. You know, not only is it one of the iconic totems of the country of America, the eagle, you know, but I mean, to literally see that and realize that, yes, although it's possible it can come into the Smoky Mountains, it's it's not as common ever over rural areas or places that have housing development. So I thought, wow, what a powerful year 2024 is. And then we had the Chinese New Year of the wood grounded, as Nicole was talking about, the groundedness and bare feet on the ground. It's called earthing, grounding yourself. Take shoes off, go step outside. You're starting to ground yourself with all the electromagnetic frequencies. These last two weeks we've had off the chart. Uh, solar flares and X class this and M class that, and we're coming into our 11 once every 11 year cycle of solar maximum. And although spaceweather.com and nasa.gov and JPL were talking about, well, this real solar maximum year is going to be 2025, now they're all scratching their heads going, um, it's happening earlier. And we've got, you know, you people that are seeing Starlink satellites and people that are unaware of. Of the the fifth military establishment called Space Force. There's a lot of stuff going on over our heads besides just the eclipses and the cyclic full moons and new moons. And there's an asteroid that uh, the James Webb telescope scenarios and all these observatories are tracking just came into view. And it's like, okay. So, I mean, it's like there's so, there's this much diversity going on for those that lean into astronomy like I do and the and the mystical elements of constellations and stars and Vedic or sidereal or Western astrology. And besides, I mean, I literally see 2024 is you don't have to worry about all the decks that you that you're buying with Oracle or tarot cards. Just look outside, because I'm telling you, it's it, it's there's an old song called Freeze Frame. You know, by the Jay Giles band. It's just like freeze frame, and it's like it just captures your attention all of a sudden, and you are a time traveler, and you are literally frozen in the seemingly third-dimensional element, but you are multiversing at that point. And before, when maybe 
um, a, a certain substance would do that, whether it's a delta-8 this or a THC or a microdose of this, would like take you there and, and you would bear witness to both the light and the shadow of your multidimensionality and come back with that, whoa, what a ride. But you bring, when you, when you tune in to your unlimited self, when you tune in to the multidimensionality that Pisces can afford us with this particular full moon, like if we will just respect the once only this year, Pisces full moon, and it has to do with the full surge of um, blessing your RNA, DNA, of allowing that divine infinity helix to be surged and, I will say, baptized by light, by fire, and the fluids, the effluvia, and the flow of your life force substance fluids in your earthly body temp- temple. So the Virgo is, are you loving the temple that you incarnated into, and what might you do to show your body, the, the creams that you buy, the oils that you use, the the uh, liquid. Mm, I just, I just, um, I just started using castor oil. Me too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time, but but, uh, but castor oil. Let me tell you, <laughs> I learned it the hard way. Castor oil is an oil that you work with in small doses. Mm-hmm. It goes deeper. My herbalist background, it goes deeper in penetrating your largest organ, which is the skin. Castor oil goes deeper into the body, into the organs, than any other oil out there. So some people will do castor oil packs, me being kind of like if I'm going to ever preach about it or teach about it to people, I'm going to experiment with it on myself. So you can start out by cleaning the, the navel or cleaning your face. With It's nature's Botox. With some witch hazel, I like Dickinson's witch hazel because it's all natural and it comes from the, 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 the witch hazel. It's all pure. It won't burn you. And so you clean your face with the witch hazel and give that about five minutes to dry. And you can put some castor oil with a Q-tip on your eyebrows. You can put it on the, the upper lids of your eyes. A little bit goes a long way. And then they're also talking about how when you put it right where that, again, where that umbilical cord was cut, when you put it inside the clean navel, whether you're an innie or an Audi, just take that Q-tip and do your divine words, your chants, and your blessings. And speaking of that, Nicole, I wanted to, I've always taught multiculturally, and I wanted to give an ancient affirmative intention type of chant that if you want to go hear it, you can type it in on Google or YouTube of what you want to do, but it, it ties in with the angelic realm before we go into the signs. And it's, it's it, 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 keep in mind, I've got a Southern dialect, okay? So don't judge me. So Ain Sof Or, and the, the Ain Sof Or is, it, it's got to do on the tree of life. It has to do light without end. And so when you look now in Hebrew, it might be spelled A-Y-N. You'll see it as A-I-N. You'll see it as E-I-N, depending on whether it's Greek or it's, Hebraic or it's Aramaic, but that it's three words. So there's your Trinity, and the Ain is the is the first. It's the highest of the veils above the Tree of Life that you're wanting to open up. The third eye, the pineal, the pituitary, the crown chakra, the soap, S O P H, is the middle of the Trinity veils that we're beginning to move into the limitless light, and it has references. And when you do the etymology of this ancient word of S as in sweet, O, P as in peach, H as in happy or hallowed, it has to do with sophomore, sophisticated philosophy. You'll see that S-O-P-H in that word. And then Ura, some, sometimes you'll see it as A-U-R. The way that I learned the chant was just U-R. And so it has to do with the lowest of the veils, closest to the top of the tree of life. These are all high veils that are being pulled back. And it means the limitless or the eternal light. So basically when you do that chant, the fire of God, the flame of limitless light is being activated. And when you look at the archangel, which is one of the ones I'm fond of, Uriel, which is spelled capital U-R-I-E-L, the U-R means the flame of God, limitless light, the light that is in all ways. And then anytime you see the E-L at the end of an angel's name, whether it's Michael or Raphael 
or, or Jophiel or Shamuel. Uriel is the light of God. So there's a certain kind of invocation or prayer that you can do to Archangel Uriel. And if you'll just close your eyes and just breathe from that navel, that diaphragmic center, I'd like to give you this. These words that come not from me, but that I activate and work with in my life, especially at the full moon in Scorpio and when we come into Pisces season like we are right now. Archangel Uriel, please light up my emotional self with the perfect power and peace of God, of the divine God. I allow the light to bring the prosperity of peace, harmony, and resolution of the root cause of any unstable emotions and any unstable sensitivities, I willingly summon, choose, and allow to examine my emotional health in the light of divine truth so that my feelings and my emotions do not overwhelm me, do not vitally drain me, or creatively block me. Archangel Uriel, I allow, summon, and accept limitless light. So where Pisces is our deepest intuitive feelings and emotions that sometimes we act on them, sometimes we willingly recognize when the veils are pulled back and we take that leap of faith and listen to the intuitive nudge and we go into them. And so Archangel Uriel and the violet flame of transmutation, which is one of Pisces' colors, when we come into Pisces, it's much brighter and much more vivid than the usual safe, neutral colors of Virgo. You know, as we come into the season of Pisces, and and go study this. This would be some great soul homework. Study the transmutational power of the violet flame, St. Germain and the violet flame, and understand that Pisces is the deepest, most ancient part of you that is not limited just by this physical body or this physical 3D ego or the current societal family enhancements and mandates and protocols of, well, I like you better when you act like this, and I'd love you more if you just go do that. Pisces is like, I am that I am. I am that I am. So this has to do with where we start to believe the dream within a dream. And so it reminds me of, if you've not heard of him, it reminds me of Carlos Castaneda's work and how he was known as the shaman of the dreaming and the power of the dreaming, and going into what First Nations cultures call the dream lodge. The Native peoples call it, as we, as we take the body into physical sleep to rest and refresh and reset our vital life force organs, the Native peoples, the Aboriginal peoples, the Eskimo, the Inuit Tarts, they believe that we then cross the river of stars and we go into the dream lodge. And there we meet our ancient ancestors, we meet our very prosperous, current, as above, so below teachers and guides and angelic hosts and all of that. When we, when we are resting the physical body and the physical body feels safe and we are letting the mind just get out of the way, the conscious mind, and we allow it not to be overthinking or obsessing or analyzing. And if you have to put on music to do that, that's fine. You know, meditation isn't measured by the fact that you're just concentrating on being quiet. When you've got an active mind, when you're a better busy type of person, put on a voice-led meditation. Go ahead and find that on the Internet or a CD or YouTube or whatever you want to do and let that play softly in the background. It doesn't have to be loud. And at first, discipline yourself a little bit to do the breath work and to lean into it and then just drift off with it because it's a very real thing, but the subconscious becomes more active when we're slumbering or napping or going into sleep, even if you wake up afterwards. The subconscious, when we let the conscious mind not have to be in charge and doze or just drift off, then the subconscious is your recorder. And as it's recording everything, sleep learning and meditating, even if your physical body, even if you're snoring, Even if your physical body goes into some type of refreshed sleep mode, you're still taking it all in, and here's that advantage. And maybe your conscious mind isn't trying to think ahead of it, or, oh, my God, i got to do that at 4 o'clock tomorrow, and did I feed the cat, and do I need more water, did I hydrate enough? So the Virgo Pisces is that sweet spot 
between are you hydrating your body, are you eating some one-ingredient foods, like did you have a banana, did you have a clementine, are you having some beets, did you ha- make yourself a smoothie, have you had some hemp hearts, are you doing some coconut, pineapple, I mean, don't, it's not processed food. When you're in a Virgo full moon or a Virgo cycle, it's got to do how might I choose to be an alchemist and deliberately take the steps to bless my own wellness, what Nicole was referring to with with your breath work. And so your breath work, as you're breathing, if you're running, if you're jogging, if you're hiking, take that moment in your breath work and breathe the divine into whatever activity. I don't care if you're vacuuming the house or sweeping the floor, walking the dog. Bring the divine, I allow the limitless light and the higher frequencies of the all that is to be one with me now. I allow the divine breath and the fire and the flame of the all that is to be at communion with me. I allow the baptism of light and fire. That's also the Chinese wood dragon. You know, that has a lot to do with dragons. They breathe fire from what? Their mouth. They can breathe fire out like a laser beam, like a directed energy weapon, but a lot of them have wings, and a lot of them have a tail, and a lot of them can fly around up in the upper echelon atmospheres. So we're really living in 2024, and boy, does that get magnified in our action month of of, uh, April. We're literally living right now as above, so below. So I just want you to be mindful, a little more mindful of your words, what kind of spells you're casting with your words. I want you to focus on not being so self-critical. I want you to not just unconsciously accept that frustration or pain or or that, why me, God, and that never happens for me. Why does that happen for everybody else? How come I put my leap of faith out there and I do this and I do that and I still get slammed back two times? You know, don't even analyze it. Just simply move past all of that dialogue and say, I accept the prosperity of the divine. I accept the creativity of the highest aspects of my soul and my purpose for being here. And I give thanks. I give thanks for the higher frequency people that I am to connect with, that I am to embrace, that I am to love and to let me love, let them love me. Pisces Virgo is also about breaking up with codependency patterns, that we stay in these toxic but less than friendships, relationships, family scenarios, because if we were really honest and admitted it, we're afraid of, well, I don't like this, but I don't know what's out there. And the signs that will be most affected, the birth dates and the degrees that are most affected by this, this feminine Virgo Pisces, this, this um, yin energy are going to be you Pisces that are born, happy birthday, around the 23rd, 24th of February, and Geminis that are born like May 23rd to the 25th, Virgos that are born around the 26th to the 28th of August, and Sagittarians that are like the 24th, 25th, 26th of of November. So these are early degrees. The full moon's happening at 5, and so you take that 3 to 7 degrees. If you have those mutable signs in your chart and you can find the house, of Virgo Pisces and any planets, especially of the mutables, but especially Virgo Pisces that are dancing around between that zero degree to six degrees of the mutable signs of Virgo Pisces, first and second place, and then Gemini Sagittarius. But where Gemini and Sagittarius as mutable signs are about living the story, chasing the adventure, both being the student and the teacher. Virgo and Pisces have to do with living the dream, fueling with your faith, trusting the process. And as Nicole was talking about earlier, you know, there has to be that match of actually taking the steps forward, actually beginning the process of being the mechanic, you know, the tool. What are your tools to be able to pursue that passion? What tools will you implement to be able to, so discipline yourself, Virgo, it's all about discipline, to not have just the great vision or the prophetic psychic awareness and, oh, my God, I see it so much differently now. Now how can you make that tangible in your life? That's the Virgo Pisces yeah. dynamic. It's, yeah. really, it's really about heaven to earth. And then also 
you know, uh, uh, letting your new teachers in life, they don't have to be paying frustration and loss or anger. You know, sometimes the Virgo thing is, is reminding us, and why are you choosing on a collective conscious level to let the things that motivate you be, I've had it, that's it. They've pissed me off for the last time. I'm not putting up with it anymore. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't have to be distress or just loss or just frustration that, that created the impetus or the motivation for you, does it? Mm-hmm. So it's like you consciously saying, yeah, you know, when I kind of look at myself, I, I, I kind of do wait till I'm really aggravated, pissed off, or frustrated before I put my foot down or I drop the psychological guillotine. So Virgo's about you are the one that's going to choose the dynamics of whether it's, yeah, that's a no for me, or you know what, yeah, that's a yes for me. Yeah, I'm the, and, and all this Aquarius energy, these stelliums that Nicole and I are talking about, Pluto, the ruler of Scorpio, letting the old die and being bohemian and radical and, and you know, bold, you know, to say, I've never done that before. I've never tried it that way before. I'm going to step out of my preconceived patterns and I need to, to test the waters to, to the old Star Trek series theme, to boldly go where no man has ever gone before. So it, it, where's your boldness? Where's your uniqueness? Where's your one of the words that Nicole used about 10 minutes ago? How can you be innovative? How can you be a creative in, in, inventor yourself of, of rewriting the, the script that you now want to embrace? And so it doesn't just stay encased in a secret Pisces treasure map. You know, it's time to take the treasure map out and say X marks the spot. I'm starting the journey in 2024. It's imperative. It's absolutely yeah. imperative yeah. that you do that this year. This this is a, some years are passive. This is an action year, the way yeah. I see it. Just the way I'm looking at the storyline, it's like, whoa, Aquarius is bold and wow. Aries mm-hmm. is like right now in the present. And Uranus and Taurus is like, okay, Everything I thought was stable, predictable, and reliable, that's in a revolt, too. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Taurus, how are you secure? How are you feeding yourself? And I'm not just talking about literal food choices. I'm talking about, I think your whole security foundation got shook up since 2020. What matters now? Aquarius and Aries are into the right now, not still lugging the past forward or blaming yourself because what you felt should have happened in your 20s or 30s hasn't happened yet and you're 60 or you're 40 or whatever. It's about, you know, get off the 3D measurement of your age and your biology, let go of the limits and do the chant. Ain't soft or I invite limitless limitless light and I am a creation. I am an inventor and I have been so duly blessed in communion with all that is holy in the limitless light. And I breathe it and I choose it. I'm one with it. And the most important part, I'm grateful. I give thanks for it. I give thanks for it. Well, as we... Yeah, that's the pulling back the veil. Yeah. And as we get ready to go into all signs, because we got to jump in there now. But I want everyone to consider, because like Mary said earlier, Pisces, Virgos, a lot about codependency. And that's why what comes up with codependency is this idea of where are your boundaries are you not just putting that boundaries in place? Are you enforcing them? But also to consider where are your boundaries blocking your energy? Like where maybe have you blocked something or stopped or prevented something that is it's time for that to, to move in and you know you can't allow it to. So just think about what needs to change. I'd like you to think about this idea of boundaries of change uh, with this Virgo full moon in that there are there's definitely change afoot uh, when we look at the Pisces and Virgo axis, but it's time to get serious about perhaps expanding the way you've always seen something, allowing yourself to see things in new ways, but also when it comes to the vision that you have, how do you now activate that through the tools of your own um, manifestation? You are becoming the magician. There is something illuminating here in your own creation, how you actively create something in this world. And part of that comes through your physical body. So uh, just pay attention to that as uh, Mary now prepares us to go into the all signs. 
I don't want to rush past what you just said, Nicole. It's so <laughs> vital, the vision, the vision. So if I could, Nicole will often say, what would be the takeaway from this particular full moon for all of us, Mary, for all of us, no matter where you think someone's lower or higher, we just are. And I like the vision quest because the vision would be the Pisces frequencies that are opening up for the next, you know, 30 degrees, 30, 30 to 31 days, starting on March 18th. The quest is the Virgo energy that says, I got this. I can do this. This is for me. This is my time. This is an adventure. You know, when, it, when we talk about commitments, it's like I'm committed to the ride. And maybe part of my, my regret would be if I didn't embrace the dream or if I didn't instigate the quest. So if we had to encapsulate two words for the Virgo full moon and, and the Pisces um, energies of, of, you know, right now we're going into Pisces, so the moon will be full in the Virgo. So I, I would say that it's about allowing ourselves, if we had to write it down, what is my vision quest? Don't focus on the why. Don't lean into the minus of Virgo perfectionism. Don't do that. Instead, just allow yourself that I have a vision, I have some passion, I have some some um, mechanical desires to overcome a bad habit, to let go of an addiction, and to move into maybe up-leveling some of the people that I want to be face-to-face with, that I want to touch me, that I want to touch and lean into deeper. That's part of what this is. So if you're an Aries, and we got to do this with this full moon because of what was activated, the incredible Aquarian electricity. Think about an electric fence. It has to be respected. Um, with the energy that was ignited, you know, with that February new moon with Pluto shifting into Aquarius. So if you're in Aries, it's a sixth house full moon, but the Aquarius is lighting up your 11th house. So write that down, Aries. It's the full moon, which is blooming over, you know, this. it's lighting up your sixth house, but the Aquarian energy is surging ahead for most of this year lighting up your 11th house. So the work to be done, so the vision right now, the details of the vision can come forth in the Pisces season in your sixth house that has a lot to do with aspects of wellness, my day-to-day routine, my, my chosen animals or pets, my attention to detail, maybe ask why am I paying so attention, so much attention to that over there when my desire and my passion wants me to get into some more focus and detail with this over here. So it, it is that practical part of you. The, the Virgo full moon is wanting to give you better tools and options with your analytical prowess, and it's going to help you come to terms with, you know, I really feel best how I give service, how I display my kindness, how I feel good about what I did with my contributions in the world today. That has a lot to do with Virgo and Pisces are the service sign. So we're all put on point in Pisces season about no matter how life blesses us through other people or finances or whatever, how are we given back in this lifetime? So it's the reliability of, of skill sets and talents. It's the, the Virgo for you, Aries, has a lot to do with you respecting your own wellness and your health and maybe some things that you know as a physical therapist or a nurse or, a, or someone that cleans teeth or whatever, those little things you can say, hey, you know, did you know that if you do oil pulling and use some coconut oil after you brush your teeth or you floss them, did you know if you slosh your mouth with peroxide and then put some coconut oil and just kind of take your tongue and put it all around your teeth and up in those gums that you just brushed or flossed that you really put a protective uh, biome layer on there and it whitens your teeth too. So, And that's really affordable. Coconut oil and peroxide is really affordable. And I got that firsthand from a Sagittarius that's been cleaning teeth for over 50 years. Yeah. So this mystic appreciates practical Virgo knowledge that's going to save me from having to spend money because I didn't know better going to the dentist. We all know how expensive the dentist can be, and we all know how important gum health and, and, and dental, you know, attractiveness can be. So that it, it, And it may be that I'm talking about that because there is it's time for you to go get your teeth looked at. It may be that. So if you're a Taurus, the way the dynamic of the full moon is lighting up Taurus, it's absolutely hitting the creativity, 
and the pleasure pursuits and lighthearted flirting and romance and adventures and just, you know, like Nicole's last name, the frolicking and enjoying being like the lighthearted fairy and the whimsical and the giggling and they're like, oh, that's fun. That felt good. Let's do that. You know, so that kind of a thing. Let's go get an ice cream cone or let's go ride on a uh, all wheel terrain vehicle. Let's go do something really different. Let's go take a, a, a cocktail around here. They're starting this. It's probably in your area too, but around here we're a little slower. Sometimes in the mountains they're having like come, you know, do a stained glass thing. Your your appetizer is part of the price. Your you get a cocktail with it. You know, come draw, come paint. Go, you know, let's do some pottery and all that. But they're adding like in the adult play fun things. And it's like, yeah, let's go get a buzz and spin some pottery or make a stained glass or paint a picture. But you're meeting people that are coming out on that same energy frequency. Like there's people you may go grab a friend and go, or you may go on a date. But there's going to be other people that you come what face-to-face with, eye-to-eye with, and a meet-and-greet opportunity, and they all thought that was kind of a cool idea to do, too. And so you're going to be out there with a reason, so you don't have to be shy about attending that, because other people that want to experience that, too, are showing up with you. So that's a really cool thing for especially Taurus right now. All the Aquarius is hitting up at the, what we call the Midheaven, or the 10th house, Virgo loves The Taurus energy, Virgo, loves the Capricorn energy. They are of the same element. They are earthy. They are grounded. So this is a safer time for Taurus to be able to be letting their hair down a little bit to do with the earthly pleasures or the passionate, you know, the bow and arrow of Cupid saying, you know, just because Valentine's Day happens once a year and it's a Hallmark holiday doesn't mean you have to put your arrow up all the time. So you may find, Taurus, that you're being pursued or that someone is trying to chat you up or meet and greet with you as you get out into these bolder, unique, innovative social experiences. But the Aquarius is hitting your 10th house. So there's there's no Taurus client that I'm dealing with when I'm reading their charts that they're not making some pretty structured, major life avenue alterations, like selling a house, moving, changing out this, someone's moving in, someone's moving out. They're going to be moving forward with some things that they do. So Taurus has their eye on work and career, but this is a cycle right now with this full moon that's very compatible to you for you to be able to let your hair down a little bit and just, oh, for God's sakes, lighten up. If you're a Gemini, Gemini, Virgo, Pisces, Sagittarius, you four signs are more in the illumination spotlight of what the moon needs you to see on a psychological, codependent, emotional, core-level intimate, those realms in your life. It's up front and up close and personal for Gemini, Sag, Virgo, Pisces. So Gemini, your mutable air, and this is a mutable earth, you're both ruled by Mercury. So let's look at the structure. Are you just repeating the same story over and over again? Is it time for you to redo your resume? It's a fourth house thing. Are, are, do you want to, would you perk yourself up if you had a house party? Instead of going out somewhere else, are there some things that you feel like you want to streamline and improve in the place where you reside? All the Aquarius is raising a a glass of celebration by hitting your ninth house. And a lot of the Geminis that I know as friends and clients are traveling. I mean, that's it. They're going out of the country. They're they're not going to lock my ass down again like they did in 2020. This is my time. It's been four years. I'm out and about. So Geminis are very stimulated by cultures they've not explored before. One of them I know right now is over in in Africa. Another one's doing a a cruise with all around the Caribbean, and it's just like Gemini's are like, oh, hail to the no, you're not putting me back in a box. So Gemini's right now, if you're embracing all the Aquarian energy, you may grab some familiar people or a familiar love, but you're wanting to go trip the light fantastic. And, And other Gemini's I know are doing different types of, exploratory things with psychology or getting high in order to get past their, their analytical mind. I mean, they're, they're, they're trying some things they've not tried before to get rid of other ways that they had pleasure pursuits or ended up getting addicted with, and they're going through rehab programs and letting go of the crutch that they used for that prescription or just alcohol. So they're, they're getting past their own way that they lock themselves down besides the year of 2020. If you're a cancer or Cancer Rising, the full moon is lighting up your intellectual savvy. 
and so it's hitting the third house. And so for some of you, it'll be setting some boundaries with cousins or nieces or nephews or siblings. Um, it has a lot to do with your community and your neighborhood. It's, it's kind of like your wit and your candor, your curiosity, your adaptability, sociability. I think the third and the fifth house stimulate sociability like Taurus is going through. Mental agility. Look at that. Like maybe learn some new words or maybe work with some different phrases so you're not just stuck in the in the 10-year time frame you were born in. You know, like understand that it's not just called a cheeseburger anymore. Now they're calling it a smash burger. You know, that's the new, that's the new urban trend from Atlanta. It's, you don't just go get a burger. You get a smash burger with special sauce, and it's not just with fries. You're getting Parmesan asparagus. And you can get a smash burger. Because I looked at the person, what the hell is a smash burger? And I read it. I'm like, it's a hamburger, right? It's a hamburger. It's a smash burger because it has a special sauce. Oh, okay. So like up-leveling it with nutrition. So, yeah, just in case you didn't know that, yeah, I just helped you out there. It's a smash burger. So, um, and Cancerian is all about food. Nicole and I often laugh about that. We always bring up food and recipes. So there's your asparagus with your smash burger for the sign of cancer. The Aquarius is lighting up your eighth house. So I... I, cancers tend to be pretty traditional, but I don't see that going on as far as their paranormal pursuits, their sexual dynamics. I, I feel that Cancerians, although they lean in to be a little conservative, they, they want to, they, they kind of feel better if somebody falls in love with them more first or someone expresses their attention and attraction for them first, like they feel more secure when they know that someone's emotionally wanting to get into their web of beauty and sensuality. So all this Aquarius stuff is cancer going, yeah, I want to do that. Yeah, I want to touch you there. Yeah, I think I want to go over here. Yeah, I think I want to, you know, I've never done that before. So if you're a cancer or a cancer riser, there might be a few mouth jaw dropping moments for you and some things that you allow yourself to explore and experience going, who? the heck knew I would ever do that or that could ever happen and I'll process it later but right now it feels good I want to do it I want to taste that I want to do that I want to go there so those normally little shy eyelash fluttering cancer uh, males or females yeah they they got some secrets that they're packing right now and just leave them alone because it's good for them to go out and try this different thing. So don't ask them all the details and don't push them into anything because they don't want that. And the Aquarius surge is hitting that eighth house. So it's it's really soul level transmutation. I mean like you're not who you were last year after this year. It's yeah, it's that it's that powerful. But the full moon's lighting up your third house. So uh, the stimulus factor that's going on with convo is is really a nice thing. If you're Leo yeah, Leo, <laughs> all this Aquarius is your polarity, it's your seventh house, it's your opposite sign, it's pulling you outside of yourself vis-a-vis -vis the people that you're connecting with, taking care of, um, caring about how their dream is and what they're doing, the people that have been iconic and mentors and truth seeker, uh, um, heart teachers in your life. Leo, this is, this is a signature year for people leaving and coming into Leo's world. And, and life-threatening scenarios can all of a sudden turn out to be alchemical healings that even the doctors didn't think would happen, like the things that we survive and then we're, we're, we're forever changed because of that illness didn't take us out or we certainly, because they were that age or going through this, you know, behind the back, they're like, well, you know, they are older, they're over 80 or, you know, they're 63 and they've had this, this, this uh, chronic illness for a long time and all the person goes, what's up? It had the illness. Believe me when I tell you, Aquarian energies and Pluto, I don't care what the doctor, I mean, I care, but regardless, I'll say, of what the doctor says or the test shows or the prescription is supposed to do, really seizing that divine fire and really up-leveling yourself, you'll smash all the records and you'll totally not only survive, but like become maybe a platform lectern teacher of, well, this is what I had to let go of, and I really recognized what my core-level subconscious stressors were. And, oh, by the way, I also had some visions in my dreams of some of my past incarnations, and I got myself disengaged from those, you know, emotional cords and those psychic knots. Yeah, those are going to be normal conversations with all this Aquarius. And, by the way, 
I've never seen so many astrologers or tarot readers on YouTube or on TikTok or on Instagram. Everybody's a psychic. You can find a psychic on every corner. So I'm going to tell you, your number one mechanical tool right now, all signs, is to use your discernment. Do not second guess your first instinct. Go ahead and invest in the teacher, the astrologer, the healer that you have at a gut level instinction. I want that person to give me an energy reading. I want that person, even though I have a deck of cards myself, I want that person's take on it because the richness of a reading or an energetic signature right now from your astrologer or your intuitive or your healer of choice will be how much is confirmed that you never had to say a word about, that they hit it, bam, 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 on what your guides and your cards and what you were getting the insights out of your chart. So for Leo, it's it's uh, that seventh house, you know, the Aquarius is hitting the seventh house, and Virgo is hitting the realm of your chart that has a lot to do with priorities that are of a tangible material world, your values, you know, how you're feeling about financial security, insecurity, what you're ready to let go of and pass on to somebody while you're living, of any material possessions. It's certainly a, an aspect of sensual uh, skill sets and, and pleasures. It's your determination, practicality, and how you're feeling lately about who's reliable in your life and who's loyal in your life. And to me, reliability, integrity, authenticity, and loyalty, yeah, those are the big rewards in my personal life. If you're Virgo, this is your full moon. Welcome to your full moon. And if there's any shadows or any little hidden corners or any closet doors that need to open, this is the full moon that opens the door. This is the full moon that gives you the key to unlock some new understandings. So the moon is in your first house. It's shining just for you. It's shining just for you. And early born Virgos will feel the oomph of this and the prowess and the and the creativity of it if you're a Virgo that's born Later on, like not in August, but in September, you may find that it's, it's the urge to purge. That there's somehow you're having to purge something and let it go, and you're not going to just keep regurgitating. It's that, that's it. It's up. It's out. I had the good foul movement. I had to throw it up. I'm, an, I'm, not, I'm not letting this happen anymore. So I would especially say to September Virgos, keep a, keep a check on Jeremy environments. Keep a check on personal hygiene. Keep a check on really doing the best that you can do, especially whether you're an August or a September Virgo, take care of, of monitoring your wellness if you're a September Virgo. And the Aquarius for you, the, the Aquarius is, is surging a type of energy that, you know, for Virgo, the opposite sign is Pisces. And so when you get into the Aquarius dynamic, it has, it has a lot to do with this first six months of 2024 is about resets and you're really finding out where you're storing tension in your body. And those are, the, those are the physical levels that you need to pay attention to and to nurture and to bless, whether it's massage and you've never done that before, or you, you do pedicures or you do certain oils like we talked about earlier. So you're going to have to lean in to take care of your physical temple, Virgos, especially those of you born in September. If you're Libra, this is the full moon before the big Spring Libra eclipse that's going to happen over the 23rd, 24th, 25th of March. So this is your embryonic time. This is your womb state. This is your, I'm in a cocoon. I want to look around inside my hurts. I want to look around inside my fantasies. I want to look around inside anything or anyone, including myself, that is eclipsing me moving forward or hindering my progress, because let me tell you something, Libra, the, all this Aquarius stuff, that is a sweet spot celestially for you. And all the areas that you like, love, romance, flirting, you know, uh, tripping the light fantastic again with somebody, just go party with somebody and get to know them. Libras are going to be able to do it just the way they like to do it on the surface and keeping it all pleasant. I don't want to have to go too deep with anything right now, but this full moon, yeah. This full moon, you've got to look at where you might have doubts or where you may feel that, that um, the doubts of another person, that's their truth, that's their judgment, and that's not necessarily your truth. So it's only going to be your truth if you allow somebody to shame or blame you. So just shut the door on it. If you're a Scorpio, full moon's lighting up your 11th house, 
This is different teams, tribes, social networking. Um, you may find an unusual manifestation of people that are reaching out to you that maybe haven't been in your usual zones of traveling, socializing, partying, sports, things like that. Scorpio is coming into some the unique Aquarian flavors of people reaching out to you. So you'll find that the 11th house is other people that are fascinated and interested in trying to meet you, talk to you, send you over a drink, come up and talk to you when you're outside. That, that they'll, they'll start chatting you up and start the dialogue. The Aquarius stuff is hitting the fourth house for you Scorpios. And so it's got a lot to do with psychological transformations, less into just the family dynamic or the kids or the grandkids or the in-laws and more to do with where, where am I at home in my soul? And I know what I do for other people, but maybe I've been enabling and empathic and doing a whole lot of stuff for everybody else around me because I was avoiding facing an area of myself that I need to do self-care on. And I can talk strong with Scorpio. I've got five planets in Scorpio. So, yeah, I don't cut Scorpio any mercy. I, got, I carry a lot of Scorpio. So it's like, yeah, no, I'm not making it soft for you, Scorpio. Just get with the program. So if you're Sagittarius, the Sagittarius dynamic, this full moon is lighting up the 10th house. It's your career. It's your societal preferences. It's, it's the authority. What do you give authority? How do you talk to your God? How do you celebrate your beliefs? What's your religiosity? Is it too strict? Have you not leaned into it enough? Where's your perseverance? Are you really addressing the responsibilities that you invited into your life in the first place? How much are you... In, um, governed by status, whether that's societal or the states or status of your spirituality, do you feel okay with yourself on answering those kind of questions of whether you're at peace with it or disturbed, or is there a disturbance and you're forced by what society's demanding or expecting from you or the government or the job or, or those that you hold in authoritarian respect. When we're younger, sometimes we want to get the approval of our parents or our boss or the professor. So with Sagittarians of all ages, it's about, I have a different kind of ambitious alchemy going on right now. And don't forget, I told you, we're all shifting archetypes. So if you've looked up the 12 zodiac signs and their archetypes, if you look that up on Instagram or on Google, you'll find that each one of the zodiac signs has about four or five different archetypal descriptions. Yeah, well, it's shifting. So check it out and see which one your intuition lands on. So for Sagittarius, um, could be changing jobs. You could be changing preferences of what type of talents you want to display. All the Aquarian stuff is stirring up your third house. So you're curious. You're curious. And you're wanting to go share your insights and your wisdoms. You're looking for some interesting stories. And you might just be the storyteller. If you're Capricorn, again, this Earth full moon favors, most of all, the Earth trinity, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. It is intense for you, Virgo, but it favors the Taurus and, and the Capricorn dynamic. And pretty much, I think Capricorn is the three earth signs it's favored the most because all the Aquarius is hitting Capricorn's second house. And so Capricorns are realizing everything they worked hard for, everything that they spent and invested their time, blood, sweat, and tears into is now paying off. And so now Capricorn is taking more of an authoritarian Saturn-ruled stance with Pisces favoring the Taurus and, and Saturn and Pisces getting along with Jupiter that Nicole talked about and saying, what do you want to expand? What do you want to sell and, and what do you want to spend more time with? And believe me, Capricorn's in that mood to let that happen. So I see it as favorable. If you're an Aquarius, um, this full moon is lighting up also a transformative psychologically uh, chains coming off. Um, tethers, umbilical cords, psychically being snapped, and there's like a whole new, um, I'm free from that. I, I, I keep hearing the words of liberation and freedom, and that's a no-go zone for me now uh, with you Aquarians. And then just add to the fact that your sign is the one that's got all the stuff going on in Aquarius, with Pluto and, and you know, Mercury. And until we get later on here, you know, it's going to start shifting into Pisces, and Aries, but we've got Mars in Aquarius. It's been two years since Mars has been into your sign. So you're starting a new two-and-a-half to three-year goal right now. So you've put it this way, Aquarius. You just got reassigned and picked by some kind of sports scout 
and you just got signed on to a new team. You got signed on to a new league, and so now everything's fresh and new, and you get to prove yourself to both yourself and the new team. And finally, Pisces, solar-wise, all this Aquarius Pisces is doing the purge on you. And this is uh, once every 12 years kind of a um, you got to cleanse it, you got to face it, stop making excuses for it, stop going on and on and on about the same old thing. And for Pisces, I would say, you know, remember the definition of insanity is doing the same thing the same way again and again and again and not netting any kind of different results. It's the hamster on the wheel type of thing. You're in a spin zone. So you've got to break out of that. And this full moon could give you some really nice, concrete answers on your intimate choices. You know, like um, a lot of Pisces that I've been dealing with, one of, one of my Pisces clients had a, had a spouse, a partner pass away. Another Pisces got the divorce. Another Pisces got the divorce and started right up <laughs> on a new intimacy because they can be very impulsive when it comes to their feelings. So for Pisces right now, it's like, what just happened? And, and, and I do see a lot of miraculous healings happening around Pisces as well. So it's a very, it's both volcanic, eruptive, erotic, and really interesting for Pisces right now. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to analyze it. You just, you know, you're committed to the ride and you've just got to go through it and then you can process it later. But I would strongly suggest for those people that are Aquarian and Pisces and Virgo and Taurus that it might be a good time even if you know how to read your cards and you know a lot of things about your chart and you know your numerology and your personal colors and your chakras and on and on ad nauseum, if there was ever a time for people to, again, put their heads in their charts, their star maps and, you know, their great soul contracts and, and go to a different astrologer or reader or healer or massage therapist or, or qigong or acupuncture this is a really good time to get that fresh eyes that fresh opinion on what's going on in your world and you'll know you've done it right i'm going to say it again when you walk away going wow i didn't lay an expectation on him or her to heal me or to do my work for me but what's really a treasure and rich is that they confirmed energetically exactly what I already knew within myself. The best kind of intuitive reading astrological cycle is when you learn your cycles and you learn what's going to get lit up over the next six months, and then you're able to take the reins yourself and ride the horse and not get thrown off the saddle as much. You know, it's going to be like, okay, I, I know my course. I know the horse ring. I know what I've got to do. That's the, my GPS said go over there, but you've got the advantage like a weather forecast of being able to say, you know, Mary, Whatever you do or who you meet, this is what's going to be lit up in your in your life this year. This is where the starry lights are going to be there. And so become your own starfish, realizing, you know, that they call them sea stars. A lot of people call them starfish, but they're actually the, the technical, scientific, ecological term is they are sea stars. And the sea stars don't have blood and they don't have a heart, but they move really quickly with all those little tiny things that you see if you've ever flipped one over. And so we're sea stars right now. And sea stars, there's 2,000 species of them. You don't have, they don't all necessarily have five limbs. We're on the five number of the full moons. The sea stars can regenerate. Even if one of those comes off, they can regenerate it. But they become brittle and die if they come out of their home base of the salt. They can only live in salt water. And so the sea stars can also be spelled this way, S-E-E. -E. Maybe it's time that you see through your stars, the majesty of who you are, and embrace it and boldly go where you've never gone before. That's it. That's your star forecast. Beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> Lots of details there for everyone to soak up and utilize during this full moon in Virgo. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you, Nicole, as always. Oh, my. Well, this moon is our last full moon before, as Mary said, we have our eclipse, our Libra uh, new moon solar eclipse, no, full moon, full moons, um, lunar eclipse. What am I talking about? <laughs> our our lunar eclipse in Libra coming up in, April, in March, which is going to set yep. off 
a very potent few, I would say six to eight weeks because we've got the Libra full moon eclipse, then the solar new moon eclipse in Aries, and then we have the Uranus Taurus conjunction. I'm, the Uranus Taurus conjunction, the Ur- Uranus Jupiter conjunction in Taurus. That's a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. I don't think we have a Mercury retrograde till like April 1st, do we, Nicole? I think I think even Mercury stays forward till like I'll check on the close closing. I think I think we're even gotta go until late March or early I'm grabbing it, I'm grabbing, it. I'm looking in the ephemeris now. That's called an yeah, astrologer's work. I, th- I think it's early April when we have um Mercury. Okay, Mercury retrograde. retrogrades on April Fool's Day. I just found it. Oh, see, there you go. It. Oh, yeah, what a wonderful, Mercury's going to make a fool out of all of us. <laughs> and Mercury's going to let us do some interesting trick-or-treats in April. <laughs> oh my, my goodness. Well, mm-hmm. um, I just want to remind everyone, speaking of April, uh, April 24th is when I have the Forbidden Journey Retreat, which is just a few days after the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So uh, this was planned specifically to be within that time frame. Also, that'll be around the Scorpio full moon. So lots of potent energies during that time. Lots of potent energies. That Taurus Scorpio axis is getting lit up. And yeah. so that is beautiful, beautiful for transformation, for going into the subconscious mind to unearth all of the things about yourself that you need to be seen in the light of truth. So if you're interested in coming, I'm going to leave the link below for tickets. Of course, I've now created a whole new retreat page. So if you're interested, definitely check it out. And Mary, you are always available to offer your insight, your stage advice to anyone who's looking to get their star chart read. And uh, they can find you at marydusina.com, which I will also leave in the show notes for everyone to easily uh, access uh, Mary's website and get in contact with her right away. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm looking forward to doing this all again with you. I love love meeting up with you and your, your lovely, very intelligent audience. And I would suggest to your audience, if you can make it happen, to go to Nicole's retreat. Even though we'll have spring eclipses and they'll pop up again in October, this by the time we get into this retreat that Nicole's doing, Pluto naturally rules Scorpio. And so even though we're going to hear a lot about Aquarius and you know Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus, in May, Jupiter shifts to Gemini. And this time frame that Nicole has chosen to bring you all together, remember at the beginning of the show when I said put your tech down and go face to face and meet person in person? This retreat that she's offering, I feel, is also going to unpack where we've been inhibited in um, sensual, physical, um, I love myself and therefore I can let myself be loved again. Whether you've gone through a divorce or a betrayal or, you know, you really thought that high school sweetheart or you really thought that person was gone out of your life forever, I really get a psychic sense that this next um, retreat that you're doing, Nicole, really going to alchemize and bless people at the most core second, third chakra levels that they're going to be able to get rid of any garbage or any uh, a sludge that's, that's been hanging on in a sense of where they deep down, even they may not even form the words, but they just don't believe they're as attractive or that they measure up or that who would really want to love me, that ship has sailed, I don't think I'm going to find that this lifetime or I had it. So it'll never come back again. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Pluto rules Scorpio. All this Aquarius energy with Pluto is now taking it into transformative, uninhibited levels. And so I feel like the star being that you are, the full bloom of your spirit self, is going to surge in the April-May time frame of this year. So if you can catch, you know, a boots-on-the-ground type of experience with people that you already know you trust and that you love, then I, I would invest the time and, and I would, you know, bite the bullet, so to speak, and say, you know what, it's been a long time since I've done something besides buy new shoes or get tires for the car. I'm going to go invest in my soul star. Yeah, I would do it. Yeah, it's going to be incredibly, there definitely will be a death and rebirth of yourself in the most divine way. And you will access parts of yourself, parts of your own vision, parts of your 
higher self that you've never even been able to connect to before, because that's how powerful the space becomes uh, during this retreat. So I'd love to see you there. If you're interested, definitely fill out the form through the link below and I will get in contact with you. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show and being such a wonderful, wonderful queen of the underworld, queen of the darkness and queen of all the things that are mysterious and beautiful. Such a pleasure to have you on the show. And to my audience, I love you. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining me for another show on the Enlighten Up podcast. I love you guys so much for all of your continued support. So remember to raise your vibe, find your tribe and be open to the infinite possibilities held in the mysteries that surround us all. Thanks again for sharing the show with your family and friends. And if you're new to the show and you need to find out more information about me, please head on over to my website, NicoleFrolic.com, where you can join my newsletter. And please follow me on Instagram, Telegram, and YouTube. Keep your light bright, and I'll see you next week.